we spent the first really three or four months of 2021 reviewing those applications in depth um, on a variety of domains, on everything from operational and, and business related logistics and plans to um, legal and financial and corporate details about you know who's going to be sort of behind and, and, and involved with the, with the ownership interest in these businesses. And then, you know, things like their ability to comply with existing land use and, and zoning ordinances in, in their local jurisdiction. So um, it was a very lengthy review process for each application. Um, and we had, you know, almost four dozen of them um, to, to, to kind of get through. We wrapped that up um, at the end of April, as I, I'm sure you've seen at this point. We made a, a determination of, um, of qualification um, or non-qualification for the lottery at, at the end of April on April 30th. Um, when we noticed 41 applications of their um, qualification for the lottery and, and four of them for uh, their non-qualification for the lottery. Um, so at that point, you know, we had ourselves on a, on a, on a I think on a, a, a glide path towards, um, towards a late May or, or, or early June lottery. Um, the, the one sort of just procedural wrinkle is that um, those determinations that I was speaking about are effectively um, administrative decisions of the Department of Business Regulation, um, and, and as such are, um, are subject to all of the policies and procedures of the Administrative Procedures Act, namely the right that's available to the non-qualified applicants to appeal the department's determination um, under the APA and administrative hearing. Um, and of the four that have, um, that were determined to be non-qualified, one of the applications, um, one of the applicants has decided to appeal the department's determination. Um, and so where we find ourselves is, you know, very appropriately, um, this is, this is the way these things work and the way they ought to work, um, in a little bit of a, in a little bit of a holding pattern while that, um, administrative proceeding plays itself out. Um, we're hopeful that we'll have a sort of a final determination sometime in the month of July, which will allow us to flip the switch and, and turn the lights on for a lottery and, and hopefully in the first week in June, uh, excuse me, in August. It's been um, two years, almost two years since lawmakers approved the expansion of the program to nine compassion centers. You know, the reasoning back then was that there was a need. There's a lot of patients in Rhode Island and there was only three um, dispensaries and, and there was a need for this. So what are we looking at in terms of when patients will have these additional options? If you're gonna do the lottery in August, when could these dispensaries be open for these folks? So let me just say that I, I, I share that sense of urgency. Um, it's been my number one operational priority since I've been on this job since the middle of January to keep driving this forward and I feel good about the progress we've made. Um, with, a, with an August lottery, very likely we'd be looking at um, final licensure sometime in the October, December timeframe of, of this calendar year. Um, and, uh, you know, depending on the sort of uh, turnkey readiness of, of who actually gets picked in the lottery, um, I'm very confident and, and very hopeful that we'll have um, at, at, at the very least a couple of these new six compassion centers opening their doors before the end of the calendar year to our patient population. Um, and, and very confident that in the first quarter of 2022 calendar year, um, we'll, help, we'll have all six with the lights on and the doors open. Um, but again, we do also, you know, to the extent that there's a budget impact here, um, anticipate collecting um, all six license fees um, before the end of this calendar year. 